नमस्कार वी शेल नाउ बिगिन विथ द नेक्स्ट लेक्चर विच इज़ लेक्चर नंबर ट्वेंटी सिक्स एंड इन दिस पर्टिकुलर लेक्चर वी शेल बी कंटिन्यूंग विथ आर डिस्कशन ऑन ट्रेनिंग दिस इज़ द फर्स्ट लेक्चर इन द सिक्स मॉड्यूल ऑफ आर कोर्स ऑन सेल्स एंड डिस्ट्रीब्यूशन मैनेजमेंट एंड एज वी डिस्कस्ड इन द प्रीवियस लेक्चर दैट द टॉपिक सिलेक्शन इज एक्चुअली स्प्रेड अक्रॉस two lectures which is lecture 25 and lecture 26 we have discussed uh, you know how to build a good sales training program we have discussed the first two stages of how to uh, you know build a good sales training program we shall continue with the subsequent stages now and in this particular uh, topic we shall be uh, you know concentrating in how you build upon a good sales training program now uh, a quick recap uh, as we discussed earlier that training is an important activity for any organization while it is something which is uh, you know costly for an organization both in terms of time and in terms of money uh, if conducted successfully the costs incurred on training are offset by the benefits that can be earned in terms of uh, you know good employee performance on the job at the individual level at the team or the group level as well as at the organizational level so training plays a very important role in you know in improving organizational performance uh, it plays an important role in helping new employees perform well in the organization it also helps existing employees adjust to newer uh, knowledge skills and abilities as well as technologies and methods of working uh, which are introduced in the organization and it eases an organization's adjustments to uh, structural or operational changes which have been occurring in the organization because of changes in the macro and the micro environment so um we were uh, discussing uh, you know how should we go about building a uh, effective sales training program and uh, we discussed that this would involve five different steps uh, we start with defining the training aims uh, which would actually determine uh, you know why should the training take place and this would differ you know across uh, you know uh, the whether the training program is an initial sales training program or it is a continual sales training program uh, the second step is deciding and preparing the training content this again we discussed that the co training content would actually determine would be based or uh, will depend upon the training needs or the training aims so uh, depending upon whether it is an initial sales training program or a continual sales training program and determining de depending upon whether the the aims of the program uh, the content for the program is designed uh, whether it could either be you know imparting new knowledge skills and abilities to the freshly hired sales trainees or it could be updating the knowledge skills and abilities Uh, you know so according for for existing employees so accordingly the content of the programs meant for uh, sales trainees and those meant for existing employees will vary the third step is selecting the training methods and then you implement the method or the program and then you evaluate the training program so these are the three stages or the three steps we shall be uh, now uh, deliberating upon so let us first start uh, with uh, you know the third step which is selecting the training methods now a proper match must exist between the purpose of the training and the training method which is adopted so there has to be a you know a, a match between uh, you know the training need and the training purpose as well as the method because not all kinds of methods would aptly meet the training needs uh, different methods suit different kinds of training needs so depending upon what the training aim is and what the train the need for training is would you be able to determine what are the different kinds of methods that should be, you should be using so as to be able to uh, you know successfully fulfill the aim of the training program or the purpose of the training program so it's important to select such training methods which can convey the training content in the best possible way and as the as you convey the training content in the best possible way you will also be able to uh, you know meet the training needs or the training requirements of the trainees so selection of an appropriate training method would lead to you know is you know uh, uh, would lead to good performance in on job once the training is completed on the other hand the selection of an inappropriate method would lead to wastage of resources both in terms of time and money because if a, an inappropriate method is chosen it would not be able to meet the training needs or the training requirements 
and in that case after the training is over the person would go back on the job but he would not be able to bring the desired performance and so it would be realized that uh, you know the training uh, entire training exercise has been has been uh, you know has been a waste so the selection of an appropriate method is very very essential and uh, it, such method should be chosen which would help meet the training needs or the training requirement in the most effective manner so the training methods can be divided into two categories we have the on the job training methods we have the off the job training methods now on the job training methods here mean as the as the term goes uh, it is placing trainees on specific jobs and giving them a job experience on the job experience so trainees learn by doing they there is a mentor or there is a trainer uh, who 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 actually uh, teaches them and trains them on the job uh, the trainees observe they watch they listen and they ask questions and queries and then they are made to perform so uh, while they are performing the trainer is able to assess as to whether uh, the trainee is, is is able to learn or has been able to imbibe what is being taught to him so it is training here uh, involves an actual situation and a work life situation where uh, the trainees are put on specific jobs and they are given a job experience now the method is very flexible uh, and you know it involves a, a it, it, it exchange of information of you know sharing of job ex experiences and knowledge by between the trainer and the trainee uh, and this this method is very suitable for jobs that call for active participation and performance by the sales people on the job so uh, while being on the job uh, the trainee is able to learn now for example uh, you know a freshly hired trainee may be uh, you know made to assist uh, another sales person with Two years or three years of experience in a in 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 a B two B scenario. Now, as uh, this uh, you know salesperson with a two or three year experience goes and makes sales call to his client, the the freshly hired recruit goes with him. He uh, watches how the salesperson is dealing with the client. He also watches how he's the, you know he's made the presentation is being made, how demonstrations are being made, how queries are being addressed or handled. So in this way, he gradually by watching, by listening, by you know through you know day to day constant uh, being in touch with his mentor or with his trainee, uh, the, the freshly hired trainee gets to learn the job. So uh, it is something which is you know uh, done hands on. and the sales person is you know is trains another by by in, you know by showing or by exhibiting how you know demos presentations are made how clients clients are to be dealt with now the trainee is watching all this listening to all this and imbibing all this and then one fine day the trainer or the mentor would ask the trainee to 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 make the presentation or to handle you know the quest customer query or complaint so in this way the trainer would also get to know whether the trainee has imbibed what is being taught to him and if he is a you know a quick learner or if he is a slow learner and if further attempts have to be made to train him better uh, the second uh, kind of methods are what we refer to as the off the job methods now here the uh, off the job training methods the training is conducted away from the place of the job uh, it is an expensive method which helps in over imparting overall development of employees and uh, but but this is done uh, not in uh, at the place of the job but it is done away uh, on in classrooms in lecture halls or in seminars and in symposiums and conferences so this is another way which can be used in another method of training now we will talk about some of these methods and uh, elaborate upon them the first is a lecture now lecture is a very uh, commonly used uh, you know instruction aid which involves a face to face interaction uh, between the trainer and the trainees and it could be one to many where there is one trainer and several trainees trainees watch and listen uh, they ask questions and uh, the trainer replies now it's very very extensively used as a training method it's very economical because a large number of audience can be dealt with or a large number of trainees can be dealt with uh, you know at the same time uh, its effectiveness of course can be increased by using multimedia aids or charts graphs demonstrations etc so this is one very popularly used method 
in training. The second method uh, which can be used for training is demonstrations. Now, demonstrations are very important when it comes to sales training, uh, where it is uh, you know showing to prospects as to how a new product works uh, is very important for sales personnel for conducting a uh, successful sales call. And so, uh, here in this case, the trainees are actually uh, you know shown how things are operated, how demonstrations are made so that they can learn and then they can uh, replicate this behavior at the client's place. So, you know, uh, demonstrations are used very, very, you know, commonly in cases where, uh, you know, uh, a product needs to be uh, operated or uh, to be better explained to the prospective customer and showing to prospects as to how a new product works or a new technology, you know, uh, works is something which is very important for sales personnel for conducting successful sales calls and effective sales trainers rely heavily on demonstrations for imparting field training uh, to the salespeople. So, the sales trainees are made to watch the trainer who will demonstrate uh, a product operation, uh, no, operational operationization of a product or who will demonstrate a new technology and the sales trainees will observe this. Uh, they will be attentive to this, they will observe it and, and they will retain it in their memory and as a part of the training program then they would be asked to motor reproduce it or you know repeat the act of performance and if they do it well their behaviors are positively reinforced by a pat on the back, yes, yes you have learnt it well, you are doing it well. So, this could again be a part of uh, you know uh, uh, training, okay, a method of training. Now, demonstration basically uses or relies on the social cognitive theory where people learn by observing uh, role modeling uh, and, and, uh, and you know we also refer to it as vicarious or observational learning. Now, in this particular method the trainee uh, give, you know follows a process of learning which is more uh, with respect to four elements of social cognitive learning which is attention, retention, motor reproduction and reinforcement. So, he is first attentive to what and how uh, the trainer is doing and then he retains it in his memory about as to how things are to be operated and for a demonstration to be made later and then he motor reproduces it when the trainer asks him to, you know, to, to, to demonstrate uh, a product on his own. Uh, either uh, you know in in the in the classroom or uh, you know at the uh, in the field and then uh, the trainer you know reinforces his behavior positively or negatively positive re reinforcement will happen when the trainer trainee has has actually uh, performed the act successfully and will deserve a praise uh, from the trainer on the other hand negative reinforcement will happen when he is unable to perform the desired behavior or unable to demonstrate the product uh, properly and uh, that would mean that uh, he, 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 I, he would either be criticized for his behavior or may be penalized or uh, the trainer may realize that the trainee needs to be further trained so that a tra a training, training takes place or the, uh, or the trainee learns the act in a particular uh, more uh, you know concrete manner. Then we another have another method which is role playing. Now, trainees are given situations and they are asked to act out their parts or their roles. So, here what we are talking of is selling situations. Uh, trainees are uh, you know explained or uh, told about a selling situation. They are assigned their different roles and they are asked to act out those roles. Now, this method helps develop the confidence of the salespeople. It enhances their social skills. Needed props are also provided to trainees to make things more real life. For example, trainees uh, you know uh, are divided into different teams and the trainer allots different parts of customers and sales representative to the uh, trainees like for example he may say yes uh, so and so you will be the train you will be the sales people and another team becomes the uh, you know client or represents the client and this would help them stimulate you know uh, simulate uh, various selling situations for better understanding of customer handling strategy so the trainer will actually divide the trainees into teams and allot parts of uh, customer roles and sales representative roles to trainees so some of them will become you know customers some of them will play as play roles as salespersons and uh, the entire selling situation will be simulated for better understanding as to how customers should be handled 
Role playing is a very flexible approach and it helps in recognizing the sales skills of uh, trainees. It promotes generation of new ideas. However, it may uh, you know uh, fail in case people are not actively participating uh, in the exercise and it is being dominated only by few of them. In that case, the trainees will not be able to learn much also. Case discussions, again, a very popular technique which has been uh, conceived by business schools and faculties therein. Case studies are important tools of learning. They are usually uh, you know, written, documented, uh, you know, uh, stories uh, and uh, they are story based which helps learners in understanding various business situations as well as the solutions which can be adopted to deal with such a selling situation. So, trainees who discuss the cases must, must be encouraged to identify the real issues in the case. They must be you know, encouraged to analyze the facts emer which emerge from the case and must be stimulated to offer solutions uh, which are very creative or very novel in nature which will help solve uh, the, 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 the business a uh, problem or the uh, or a situation which the company is facing impromptu discussions now says problems are presented to trainees in the form of a presentation and then discussion is stimulated amongst them uh, and to to ask them for effective solutions for handling to such situations so these situations are sometimes picked up from past lived experiences of uh, of the trainers themselves or of other sales personnel in the organization or of sales managers in the organizations and such situations help trainees understand the kind of situations they may have to face in future while dealing with uh, customers or with clients. So, the main objective of the impromptu discussion is to check how spontaneously the trainees would react and the kind of solutions that they would propose. A moderator is always essential for such kind of a discussion uh, so that it does not enter into it become a fish market and the room arrangement is also equally important with time management uh, for conducting uh, impromptu discussion sessions in a proper if in a proper manner. Gaming uh, another method uh, which is used in training is gaming now also called simulation and very similar to role playing. Players are selected to assume decision making roles across uh, various rounds of the game. Now games for example games in which trainees are divided into various teams and they could be asked to act out as a team of negotiators from different companies and, and the one team which closes the sale uh, and, uh, you know or closes the deal at the best bid for the company would win. So, it is basically where the trainers are divided into teams and uh, situations are placed which act more like business games and they are to play out different roles. Uh, these, these games could pertain to negotiations, they could pertain to demonstrations, they could pertain to presentations and team which performs the best uh, is the one which actually wins. So, it adds a flavor of entertainment and enthusiasm amongst participants and uh, it, but, but of course, it requires a huge amount of uh, you know great amount of uh, planning to, to, to decide on the games and uh, successfully uh, implement them in, in the classroom. Uh, of course, on the job training as I just mentioned is accompanying the trainer for a sales call, uh, watching, listening, doing uh, followed by appraisal from the uh, trainer or from the uh, salesperson. Uh, and then we have online courses. Now, online courses can be uh, used for both for initial sales training program as well as for continual sales training programs. Online videos of instructional material in the form of videos or presentations are shared with the trainees. Uh, and it is a very suitable method when trainees are hugely dispersed, they are geographically scattered and they cannot be brought to a particular location. Uh, you know for, for, for attending a training program. So, uh, trainees must be asked to submit regular assignments to make sure that they are going through the material otherwise most trainees will not want to go through uh, the material and, and entire exercise may be, uh, may be futile. So, trainees must be asked to submit regular assignments. So, this would actually coerce them into going through the different modules in the online course uh, and the end exams may be conducted to judge the effectiveness of the online training program whether it has been effective in imparting le training to the to the trainees or changes need to be made so that such online courses can be made more effective in future. Now, after deciding on a training method, the next step is the implementing the training program. Now, a sound execution of a training program is very, very critical for the conducting of conducting an effective training program and decisions which need to be made here are with respect to 
who will be the trainees, who will be the trainer, that means who will conduct the training program and where and when uh, will the training program be conducted. So who will be the trainees, of course initial sales training programs will be for all new sales personnel. Uh, decision making with respect to who the trainees will be becomes complicated and complex when it is a continuing sales training program. Uh, of course uh, there are certain criteria which are used for selecting tr trainees for training programs uh, when, when it is a continual sales training program and these relate to a reward for good performance or you know an action against poor performance or seniority or convenience of trainees and uh, trainers. So this is uh, you know with respect to making decisions when it is a continual sales training program. Who will conduct the training program? Now many times companies have a separate department and a trained sales staff which actually conducts training programs. There are corporate staff trainers who are trained for this exercise. Uh, also sales executives with experience can also take part in the training program and they would share their field experiences, they would share their knowledge, they would share their uh, skills and abilities uh, which, 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 which are of crucial importance especially when it comes to preparing new employees for field training. Experts outside the company can also be conducted to offer specialized training programs. Where and when will the training take place now? First let us come to when. So the timing of the training now, timing for initial training, uh, you know, it depends upon the timing when large recruitments are made. So in most cases as and when a new, you know, a huge lot of recruits are hired, the company plans its training program. Generally it is, you know, months of May or July, uh, you know, when f people graduate from, uh, you know, colleges and are actually uh, hired by the company. So they have an exhaustive, long six months to one month training, pro six months to one year long uh, training program meant for them. So it is generally done when uh, large scale recruitments are made. Uh, timing for continuing sales training program depends upon a lot of factors like, you know, the sales season, uh, you know, for time availability, uh, you know, with the prospective trainees or, uh, you know, if it's need based. Need based here meaning that if there is an urgency for a training because a new product is being launched or a new market is being ventured into. So based on the need, uh, you know, and the urgency, uh, continual sales training program uh, would be the duration and when, when it is to be conducted would be decided upon. The place of training again, uh, you know, could be centralized or decentralized. Centralized training could be held in the corporate offices. This leads to better product training. However, huge travel costs and neglect of territories while the salesperson is away can lead to problems. Also, uh, training location should be decided in such a way that it becomes easy for people to reach the location. And uh, again, uh, one needs to give a huge amount of attention to, to uh, you know, cost, the cost factor in terms of boarding and lodging. Uh, which need to be taken care of. Uh, training can also be decentralized. Companies can train salesperson near their future territories. But until and unless such training programs are closely monitored, they may end up being poor quality and the and 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 the training program may be may be may dilute with respect to quality issues. Uh, so uh, companies may have either uh, companies may either decide to have a centralized training or a decentralized training. Of course, both of them have their pros and cons. The next step here is evaluating the training program. Now evaluating a training program is very very crucial because of the huge costs which are involved in training. Evaluation will help uh, provide an answer to the fact that yes, have we been able to achieve our objectives and if yes, fine. But if we have not, then we need to devise or re redesign our training program so that better training programs can be conducted in future. So evaluation helps uh, provide scope for conducting future training programs more effectively. Trainees should be asked to fill up a detailed feedback form in the end, feedback about the course, about the content, about the delivery, about the trainers, etc. Uh, thereafter, once they are placed on the job, uh, you know, their day-to-day -day performance may be measured and, uh, you know, uh, the a reporting authority maybe should be, would, would be would, should give feedback as to the kind of performance uh, you know the trainee is is delivering uh, 
uh, while on job. Now, may, before uh, the training program formally concludes, a written tests may be conducted and to evaluate the training program. Observations may also be made to check the extent to which trainees are being able to apply what uh, they are being taught. So, while written tests would be more, uh, you know, in pen, paper and pencil based or online, the observations may be more with respect to asking salespeople to perform certain acts of behavior or react to certain kinds of selling situations uh, as in the case of business games. Now, um, mapping the performance of salesperson after the training period ends while they are on the field can also be used as a measure for performing uh, for performance evaluation. So, this brings us to an end of this lecture. The references are still Kandev Govani and Puri, Sales and Distribution Management, Panda and Saidev, Sales and Distribution Management, Greenberg, uh, Behavior and Organizations, uh, Global Edition. So, with this we come to an end of the first lecture on the sixth module of the course and, uh, and uh, we conclude our, uh, our lesson on training. Thank you.